people of the West are being told that Putin is so bad that nuclear war is a reasonable option to get rid of him. And if you think this may be true, I urge you first to take the time to watch Oliver Stone's interview with Vladimir Putin and see for yourself if this one man is worth starting a war over. The mainstream talking point is that Vladimir Putin is a killer because he was in the KGB. But what they won't tell you is that he resigned from the KGB because he did not agree with their methods. He described communism as a blind alley far away from the mainstream of civilization. He is a patriot of old Russia, the thousand-year melting pot of many cultures, and for his entire leadership has sought peace with NATO. For a brief moment, it looked as if President Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev were going to end the mutual assured destruction arms race between the two countries. But by the time Putin got a seat at the table, the mood had changed. Putin tells us that President Clinton tried persuading him to join the U.S. in leaving the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty of 1972, citing an ambiguous threat from Iran as an excuse. Putin suggested that if they were to abandon this foundation of arms control, then they should develop a new anti-ballistic agreement. The United States had other plans, and after 9-11, President Bush announced that the U.S. would withdraw from the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty. After doing this, the U.S. then began developing missile systems around Russia's borders. Putin has been assisting the United States in the war against terror and has seen how the U.S. have been using terrorist groups against Russia. When U.S. backed terrorists in Georgia attacked South Ossetia, Russia moved in to defend civilians, and the American media spun it as if Russia was the aggressor. When an overwhelming majority of Crimeans voted to join Russia, the Western media spun it as if Russia had coerced them. In 2012, the U.S. State Department openly meddled in Russia's elections. And in 2014, they orchestrated a violent overthrow of the Ukrainian government in plain view. Early this year, the U.S. State Department threatened to shut down the Nord Stream pipeline. If Russia invades Ukraine, one way or another, Nord Stream 2 will not move forward. Followed by President Biden. If, uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the, uh, the, the border of Ukraine uh, again, then uh, there, will be, uh, we, there will be no longer a Nord Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. But how will, you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will, uh, I promise you, we'll be able to do it. And now it appears as if the U.S. has done it, as the State Department brags about it. While NATO desperately seeks world domination, the Russian foreign ministry has built an alliance with the majority of the world, an alliance backed by sound money that respects national sovereignty and strives for world peace. At this point, it seems fairly obvious that if Americans don't wake up to the fact that they are no longer the good guys, then they stand to lose all the freedoms that America used to stand for. Reporting for InfoWars, this is Greg Reese.
Thank you for watching the latest Greg Reese Report. Be sure to go to reesreport.com to see my latest videos, sign up for my free newsletter, and subscribe for exclusive content. And be sure to support my sponsor at InfoWarsStore.com. Thank you.